Good morning, everyone. This one, this one came out great. I had a problem with um, my coffee cut, uh, curdling uh, the soy milk, but I added peanut butter and, of course, the turmeric. I'm not using honey because this is like a, a power keto coffee, which um, it has coconut oil and turmeric and cinnamon but stevia instead of honey because it's uh, a keto thing that I'm doing which is really cool it works and anyways this video I'm gonna try to I'm going to be brief I'm on 50 seconds right now is going to be uh, it, it's going to share I'm sharing a few ideas that have to do with why Absolutely, we need to uh, redesign, reconfigure, and uh, transform the United Nations. Um, I have to, of course, prove why it's failing and what it's causing the world and uh, what it's leading countries to do. And I'm going to pause right now. Well, uh, well, it's gonna, it's gonna. That is the the central um, argument of the video, of my two cents. Uh, but I'm also going to exemplify the United Nations as evidence for why, what for so long, so many thinkers or countries or people have believed that you need weapons to stop weapons or fire to quash fire in other words that uh, to keep the peace you need a strong army and the second amendment um, you have to be strong in order to defend against blah 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 that whole concept um, is um, false it's erroneous it doesn't work it leads to uh, a type of escalation instead of keeping the peace or balancing things out it doesn't it, it provokes a condition of uh, heightened hostility which produces uh, more um, you know uh, hostile social conditions and the United Nations my point about the United Nations, speaking about the United Nations, is going to prove that and uh, make itself evident for uh, the dissertation that would explain the latter, why uh, needing strong armies or, or a gun to stop war or to stop uh, hostile domination by another is is wise it isn't and I'm going to do it through explaining what the United, what is happening with the United Nations and I'm going to finish my coffee while I pause and think about how I'm going to say this okay um, first I'm going to read um, the preamble uh, purpose of the United Nations um, or purpose of the United Nations, which would be interesting for some of you, because you probably never read it, <laughs> never saw what the United Nations was supposedly created for. It says, "We, the people of the United Nations, determined to have succeeded gener to have to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war, which twice in our lifetime has brought untold sorrow to mankind." So basically it's saying because of both world wars, we have said that's it. We want to stop warring on the planet. And to reaffirm faith in fundamental human rights, in the dignity and worth of the human person, in the equal rights of men and women and of nations large and small. I wonder if this was translated, but in any case... So, to preserve the dignity and worth of, of the human person, because we wouldn't be assaulted 
by uh, by the bullying power of war and ruthless invasive um, military authority and bombs and destructions of our peace of our social fabric right and uh, as I go as I read it I'm gonna interject with little things just because I'm not gonna be able to remember to say it later um, you know the idea of Invade, taking over the 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 um, the events of a country. I don't want to say invade, but to basically overwill the uh, the natural course of another nation and what they're doing with their problems and what they're going to do about their leaders, who not everybody is happy with, and instead uh, saying move aside, we're stepping in and killing your leaders is really not a way of uh, respecting the dignity of, uh, of the human person. Uh, we all have pride for our countries and our histories and our peoples and our cultures and we all regard other nations as a person would regard somebody else, right? And so when another nation decides to just go ahead and do what they want with our country and come in and kill our leader who many of us liked for for better or for worse uh, he was there he was there because a great pool of people believed in him wanted him for their country and another country comes and kills them in front of your eyes it's akin to just killing a family member, um, even an allied nation that's supposedly saving you from the occupation, coming in and needing to kill your family members, one of your family members, uh, because it's just the, the, if, the uh, something that happens in war. And that is not uh, preserving the dignity and worth of the human person. I just wanted to interject with that. In the equal rights of men and women and all of nations large and small, and to establish conditions under which justice and respect for the obligations arising from treaties and other sources of international law can be maintained. Okay, here we start seeing a few signal uh, signs of what I want to talk about a little bit later, but I can also see that there was a clear intention to uh, be able to use treaties and agreements in some kind of divisive way, um, you know, but that's okay because it, 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 it has to do with what I'm going to speak about in a little bit, which has to do with uh, uh, human nature and what we think is a correct, is, is what we have been thinking is the right way of uh, reasoning through this level of this area of civilization and these problems with war and so forth. Um, but, um, you know, you can see how there, there's already a, a, a small hint at the organizers, the creators of the United Nations wanting to use treaties because they believed that the way to um, to um, stop wars and you know, or uh, stop leaders and 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 le uh, leaders that would just brutally invade another country and destroy other countries or what have you, uh, needed to could only be stopped through the use of joined, allied. Um, and of course, this is probably inspired by the fact that the Allies won. Um, you know, but there's aspects of human nature that we'll get into also later. Uh, why it's why the richer, more advanced countries win and also have a part to do, have a have uh, their share or their part to do with why the war starts. Because really, what provokes people to be defensive, hostile, and hostile is not that somebody else can point a gun at you, but it is that somebody else has power in moving and pushing you to do things that you rather think about or take your time or don't agree with and want to talk about 
um, and and you know countries that are more powerful, more modern, more advanced, they first entice with things that are sharing uh, sharing discoveries, sharing the wealth, uh, offering kinds of trades that seem interesting and, and hook countries that are uh, would like to have the same or need to catch up or are in need, and um, and then problems start because we have never applied the true principle that should be at the center of the United Nations, which is to respect all countries in absolute and total equality. To respect all countries in absolute and total, equi in, and total equality means to, um, sort of like the code of honor of, uh, of, of parents towards, uh, towards their children or towards the children of others, where you have to let that person, or the code of honor of a school, for example, to let that person discover and, and build their own path and arrive at their own destiny through their own efforts. So, if we can, that means every country builds and itself and develops in their own right. And if we were, true, if we were to be true to that uh, principle, it means, and, and really honor it in our engagements with other countries, it means that we would, um, we would not look for openings f for situations where they don't care, or they don't see that they should take care of that for themselves. We would hold back and know better and not offer something that they should really uh, first do on their own, you know, which is kind of something we can relate to as human beings in, in the context of uh, when a person needs to earn something so they can build their own morale um, and so forth. And, and we should apply these uh, moral mechanisms or principles to the concept of respecting and honoring each other as totally and absolutely equal nations on the planet if we want to our uh, United Nations to succeed to work I'm checking my camera because it, it just stops sometimes for whatever reason okay so then it continues to say to establish conditions as a wish okay to promote social progress and better standards of life and larger freedom if only that was uh, up there with all the Anyways, I'm not going to start laying into what the United Nations has actually been doing. Let me continue and finish. And for these ends, to practice tolerance and live together in peace with one another as good neighbors. To practice tolerance and live together in peace with one another as good neighbors. Uh, instead, we have been using uh, the United the leading countries, the countries that have more power and more influence in the United Nations, have been using the United Nations uh, to pressure, to push, to coerce, to to direct countries to go one way or another. This is not living in peace. Um, and uh, does it say harmony? It, it's practically suggesting harmony. To practice tolerance and live together. No, you know, there's no tolerance here. If we truly had tolerance, we would be saying, okay, you know, these countries want to explore socialism. Uh, their people are okay with having an uh, to authoritarian, totalitarian, absolute leader. They don't really seem to be running for the border. They, that's what, you know, uh, let's see where they go with it. That would be tolerance. We don't have tolerance. As soon as we see somebody does, it makes any criticism towards uh, the way of the dominant countries, the capitalistic trade and so forth, and seems to... Uh, speak of socialist ideas immediately uh, the, they get classified into the not the good guys not the ones that we're friends with you know that's not what the United Nations was pur purporting uh, from the beginning 14 minutes okay to unite our strength to maintain international peace and security now that one they love right that one obviously was intentional um, they're thrown in there um, this is the great irony, and I, I'm going to make a, a human um, analogy, a metaphor. Um, when people argue, they fight verbally over something they don't agree or they understand differently, it's sort of 
um, if I, I assume you can relate to this. To anybody can relate to this. It's a, it's an ener It's a kind of a frequency or an energy, a, a state of mind, if you will, uh, that you are experiencing. It's heated. It's uh, very dynamic. It's rushed because you're you're engaged in in in, in Try to be clever and intelligent and, and prove your point or win that argument. And it's, all, it's like saying one uh, modality or uh, one modality of, of, of human behavior, right? Um, as soon as somebody throws the first punch, um, that all goes out the window and we go to another part of our brain which is sort of our primitive survival instinct and we defend ourselves, we bite, we kick if we don't know how to fight, maybe we run, you know, we can become somebody completely different. Um, and um, it cancels out completely the, the first modality. It immediately, um, it's, like re it's like pulling the plug <laughs> I hope that didn't turn off the video. It's like pulling the plug on the first uh, manner in which we were engaging over the problem and suddenly putting all the energy into this other modality of uh, primitive, primitive reactions and flight or how would they call it, uh, fight or flight or something. Um, and this is really critical because um, human civilization and our highest achievements, everything that has to do with tackling the most challenging aspects of our uh, biological predicament, finding discoveries for illnesses um, or, you know, uh, engineering problems, um, all the great achievements or the very complicated um, elaborations of philosophy, for example, they are all uh, leading, all these, uh, are, they are created by the modality of intelligent, intense, concentrated, intelligent thought, or what I call in other videos, the logic side of the mind, which is also responsible for not knowing what we're doing to ourselves and hurting us, but they are what, hurting ourselves with our inventions, but the, it is what is giving form to civilization. It is what is leading us. Our, uh, not our primitive mind is not <laughs> leading us. Uh, our intelligent higher capacity, uh, which is also detached from um, creation n primitive nature. In other words, the one that wanted to fight and grab each other by the hair happens to be truer and usually will come out with a what in this in a condition of peace and and peace and normalcy and stability it will have the truest it will produce the truest perspective on life it will know that what matters are that your children stay with their parents for example uh, the other mind the logical mind the one that leads and creates and builds civilization um, has greater potential to for our survival and for solving our most challenging um, uh, confrontations and predicaments, but it's also the one that m messes up our own f human physiology, existential form, as an uh, or, or rather maybe our animal nature, the one that's truest to our happiness. Let's just call it. Um, and yet, it is our intelligence or our modality of choice because it is the one that's more sophisticated. Although it ends up inventing things that end up harming us and contaminating our food or, or killing our children in wars or what have you, it is the one that has also uh, cured illnesses and uh, made beautiful cathedrals and structures that, you know. Um, so... Um, it's interesting because here we, the United Nations, uh, this dissertation that I'm making of the United Nations is almost like an analogy of our existential con uh, predicament or condition. And um, 
there is uh, intense contradiction in this sentence. The, to unite our strength to maintain international peace and security. The state of peace, as would be defined peace among men, is where we're not arguing, we're okay. And naturally we would not resort to a gun or a club <laughs> or, or knowing karate <laughs> if we are in natural harmony. That's not part of uh, our naturalness to be violent with each other. Violent it, to be violent is natural, but it's, it's, it's natural from in a defensive context. Violence is an energy and a power that we have to produce to defend our existence, our survival. Usually before cat natural catastrophe or animals attacking us, our higher mind, which precedes, which leads, and is, has a higher perspective on humanity, understands that what we want is not to be expecting another one just like us to attack us when we're not looking although that <laughs> although we do that but it is not what uh, in, 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 in critical order it is not what the given that would come with peace in other words so the sentence of needing strength or firepower or to organize our military efforts with one another in order to maintain the peace it's a perverse contradiction because if we want to achieve peace, which is what the United Nations proposes, we would want to create situations of peace that do not involve that which attacks peace, which is arms, weapons, and wars. We would want, the United Nations would uh, be dedicated to producing and or uh, administrating, organizing, creating uh, educating, cleaning out, and, 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 and putting the, shedding the light on our errors and so forth, and creating a condition that where peace becomes the natural, occupies the natural space it has in our existence. Peace is not something, peace for mankind is not something that, oh, we're trying to achieve it because it's so difficult. Uh, we make it difficult. Now, the world doesn't seem to show the opposite, correct? But in reality, it is not. Peace is what you look around and see animals grazing, entire cities walking, uh, rushing through their streets, people rushing through the streets of entire cities, um, animals contemplating citizens in a city, um, birds flying all over the place. Uh, peace is the natural state of life. We uh, creation has made all living creatures; uh, otherwise, we couldn't flourish. We couldn't proliferate. Steve, it, the peace is the given. We later create uh, situations that um, make peace difficult, combat peace, uh, op create obstacles. Uh, challenge. We don't see that. We don't recognize it because we don't have a self perception of a a human being, a single collective as a, as a being. We, this use of the pronoun we is not used practically. Very, very generally we say we should, you know, we should arrive, we should get to the moon. <laughs> and then, um, then we rush to put a flag and say it's ours. <laughs> Anyways, um, so it's interesting to see that the United Nations has, and in fact the United Nations has, um, has demonstrated this perversity um, immediately it starts because I'm not saying that it, it's an evil instrument that was secretly devised to dominate the world which is what a lot of people are saying and you can't blame them because it <laughs> looks that way uh, I'm saying that it, it's it's a victim of our own nature we believed that we must be powerful and use weapons in order to maintain peace but the United Nations is demonstrating that it fails at this, that that idea, that that concept does not work. It does not pan out. It just, it just keeps getting worse. It just keeps uh, provoking more uh, antagonism and, and making uh, resentment uh, become 
uh, how do you say it? It, seed, it seeds resentment and it, it, it causes uh, members to act up and, and start uh, getting frustrated not knowing how to criticize the countries that are leading the United Nations and it's, it's horrible, it's just not working out. Uh, why? Because what it, the way it went about um, its function is to create uh, first uh, elitism, groups of countries, right, right from the start it goes against, it says world, 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 all the peoples, all the peoples, and you know it, it, it presents itself as this forum of equality and the first thing it does is says okay but this group of countries are going to lead now I'm not saying that this is an evil uh, uh, I, I think that in all uh, in all in, um, naiveness of human humanity hu human naiveness <laughs> I know it's funny <laughs> calling calling huge thinkers and political leaders naive but but not countries can be naive, cultures and societies can be naive. Um, they truly believe that it, it is up to the countries that are more advanced to lead, and then they would, you know, but we don't, they would bring in the other countries, right? That was sort of the idea that was sold. Of course, we've never been, we've never owned up to the true nature of mankind. And the truth is that once human beings, uh, a person, mankind, womankind, what have you, has power, has power over others, it's a different ball game. And this we are consistent in demonstrating. As soon as those who said, we are, you know, the, the bastion of democracy and civil rights, and all of a sudden it's like they're throwing out leaders, invading countries, killing people's leaders in, on TV in front of their own people, doing the most, uh, you know, lying, saying that we, we uphold democracy and, and really they're giving money to people to uh, overthrow elected governments and, and, and keeping, strangling nations for 60 years and not endlessly, until what? Until it becomes the government that we want it to become. You know, that's not the United Nations. And... You know, and yet the United Nations was instrumental in in what they continued to do to Cuba. So the the com the complete and total failure of the United Nations is understandable by understanding human nature. Our leading logic, our higher intelligence, the one that was arguing something before they they got into a fist fight actually has is very limited it believes things and then knowledge of course is like layers of lava you 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 are able to stand higher thanks to layers that hardened before another layer came and covered it otherwise you would never have been able to stand 10 feet above land that was 10 feet below your feet i'm missing my little shack obviously um, and so, um, you know, the, what, I, I'm changing subject here. Um, prejudice, prejudice, emotional, uh, prejudices affect our emotional uh, intelligence or emotional understanding, emotional reasoning of things, which is which is recent over these layers uh, of uh, of previously established or concluded. Uh, thoughts or knowledge. Um, I just wanted to con to encapsulate that as another interesting area that I should do a video on alone, uh, which explains how we think and why we say the things we do. Basically, it's not out of nowhere. There's a little structure of why we believe and say the things we do. We are educating and learning throughout our whole lives and, and that is what we decide to do and what we will to do, what we decide to believe, what we decide to say and then what we will to and end up uh, when we end up doing something. These are all things that can be understood as a, a build-up, a construction that involves not just our individual lives but 
what society advances with and educates its generations with. It's all very interesting. Let's just um, finish here. Uh, to ensure an acceptance for institutions. Okay, okay, this one's interesting. And to ensure by the acceptance of principles and the institution of methods that armed force shall not be used. Okay, more clearer than that, it is impossible. It is a direct contradiction to ensure by the acceptance of principles and the institution of methods. So in other words, it's conditioning itself. It's saying that armed force shall not be used given <laughs> so as long as the acceptance of principles and institutional methods. And, and who decides that? The little group that decides we're going to lead the United Nations. So they set down the principles and the institution methodic uh, inst institution methods and, and then they say, well, then, in that case, we're not using armed force. Come on. Now, again, I don't want to say that this is... But can you blame people for, for saying the United Nations is an instrument to dominate the world? No, the, in, the United Nations is just created by uh, humankind's inadequate, limited, short-sighted... Um, condescending of others, you know, our human nature, intelligence. It's not... Uh, it, there was a little hope in there someplace, someplace, I'm sure, by some of it. What probably was the case among the, 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 the population of people that were creating and generating the, the start of... which started, of course, before with the League of Nations, but when it, it came time to create the United Nations, there, there were probably people who really believed in their hearts this is the way we're going to get there. This is, um, and then there were probably also people who say, "Well, you know, that's never going to happen. So this way, we can be sure that we'll always control the situation." And so they were all there. All of humanity was there in, in the creation of this. Um, common interest, employ international. Okay, oh, here we go. Save in the common uh, that armed force shall not be used. Save in the common interest conditioning itself, right? And uh, to employ international machinery for the international machinery for the promotion of the economic and social advancement of all people. Yikes. That's scary. It's kind of saying, you know, we're going to decide when something is advancing and economically growing, and if it's not, we can use our machinery. What does machinery mean? So, yeah, there's just a lot of... Uh, beyond hypocrisy, but probably a lot of ill intent, have resolved to combine our efforts to accomplish these aims. Accordingly, our respective governments, through representatives assembled in the city of San Francisco, who have exhibited f f their full powers... Okay, I think I made my points, and I'm just going to conclude by saying by speaking what I believe the United Nations should be, and it's a very simple concept. To me, the United Nations should be like uh, the brain of a body of, of the world. Uh, we know already that human nature, that injustice is facilitated because of power at the hands of human nature, and therefore we know already that it's very difficult for one country to have all the power because eventually it's run <laughs> by people, <laughs> by human beings that, you know, try to get, get, come, get richer in their own country or maybe believe ideologically, truly, that another country is evil or whatever. Um, we see that it doesn't work. One country alone does not, cannot lead the world it would be like mono agriculture, you know, destroying the variety of of uh, a, a plant species to to um, to have proliferate only one kind, only one potato, only one tomato, and then you, you miss out on the whole idea of evolution, and you're vulnerable to uh, to also being decimated by one bug that figures out how to how to you know how to kill that tomato or that potato. Um, in, in ecology and self-sustainability and green 
agriculture, you know, there are some great concepts. And we understand that what you don't want is to have a, a, a sterile, singular strain of vegetables that you maintain with um, with pesticides. <laughs> what we want is to maybe grow several kinds so we can also choose and have different flavors and different the whole spectrum of, of proteins and, and all the vitamins and minerals of, of vegetables that sometimes are more concentrated in some strains than others and we prefer this flavor or the other and we also want to see uh, you know we are finding out even that uh, that potatoes that are imperfect taste better, tomatoes, they, they come up. But anyways, uh, maintaining uh, crops disease-free through insects and other weeds and other plants and all this stuff is really, we're discovering that it's actually more advanced because it requires more complex thinking, understanding really how nature works and uh, taking its own manner, its own MO, sort of say, and exalting health in nature is really a, a challenging science because it's like uh, wanting to instead of taking the fast road which is what mankind wants to do uh, use pesticides and just get this beautiful big fat tomato to come out which over a few generations becomes hard and weird and flavorless and uh, we are saying no let's aim for the best that our taste buds and our appreciation of nature desires from nature but let's do it through the ways nature does it and well the science of ecology is wonderful and it's a great metaphor for uh, for what we're doing with the United Nations instead of finding the way in which societies naturally desire harmony and interaction we're saying we're going to force it with institutions with systems with machinery with armies with <laughs> white helmets <laughs> it's it's perverse it's just it's just not failing it's failing and it's really interesting how nobody can seize that nobody can stop it nobody can say people who, who try to criticize the United Nations or the countries that lead us get murdered, lead it, get murdered, <laughs> they get killed <laughs> if, they, if they say anything against the countries that are so uh, leading the United Nations. So, uh, oh God, it's it's a difficult uh, situation, and yet the United Nations actually has already established the wiring, sort of uh, the place uh, in the world that would have been so hard to get to uh, by uh, by peaceful means. Uh, how can I say this? In Spanish we say the good way, instead of doing things by force and arguing and fighting and forcing somebody else to do things, you talk to them and they, you convince them to do the right thing uh, through good instead of through bad. Uh, had we wanted to create a uh, a world instrument, an organization to lead the world, you know, and, and t represent every country and have um, connecting uh, <laughs> um, fiber optics <laughs> network to each nation, to, to this brain, this central organization, and proposed it without any critical, urgent, or devastating need, it would have been really hard because we can never agree on anything as a world, right? As And, and so, um, and so it was for, however it came to be, it got there. And now we have it in the right place, wired to all the nations, to all nations in the world, and, um, except that it's working perversely and creating tension and I'm not going to say doing more harm. But anyways, um, the idea, the concept that I was explaining before was that it would be a, a brain for, the, for, huma for humanity civilization or for the world is an interesting concept because by putting it in a place that it is maintained, like the brain is, the brain, well, you know, I don't want to make too much 
phys physiology analogies because it's not going to work out. But if the United Nations had its own territory and did not um, and did not um, reside in any country, and no country would have the power to block a representative of it from coming to it, what's so ridiculous? You know. Anyways, um, and for the, we wouldn't have that problem for one thing. And it were ma maintained economically by all nations equally, which should be sufficient. What would motivate countries to want it, to um, to want to support it and give a little chunk of their of their of their money to the United Nations? Is it working? Is it truly solving problems? Now, for that, the United Nations would have to look at the planet borderless in a more natural, more ecological, more hum human way um, and say, okay, we have drought here and we have too much water there and be the brain that organizes how to get some water to that place where there's a drought. That kind of thinking would require um, not so much the, uh, the will of individual nations, but the will of a central brain that is organizing and administrating the world. Um, so the concept would be completely different. And yet, that would be the concept that would be true to the supposed original intention of a harmonious, peaceful world that the United Nation proposes or suggests proposing uh, although the way it proposes it, as I just uh, um, dissertated on, is not is very self-contradicting, hypocritical, self-defeatist. Uh, the way, however, that it could be done is by it being completely neutral to all countries, being supported by all countries, and represented by all countries demographically in equality, which means uh, possibly represented through language, so that all languages, it doesn't operate on one or two or languages and then everybody else has to translate, but truly designs everything in a perfect distribution of demographic equality, which would mean each country, each people, rather, represent themselves through language. So perhaps uh, countries that speak the same language uh, could agree first on on their input on, in, the f in a forum of all languages um, and of course maybe if there are a greater population of people they may have more weight and there may be systems uh, a way of uh, balancing out that because you know the, the concept also that must be held in a, in a, in a transformed United Nations is that w each language um, the population, the whole population of a single language contains the intelligent production or the intelligent form of um, closer... Okay, well, this is hard to explain. I'll say it this way. If you have a hundred million people who speak Spanish and you have... 5,000 people who speak Hawaiian and both groups have to resolve how to, for example, um, end a dispute or how to solve this problem with a, a drought or a crop or a war or what have you. And they have to propose a solution to end it, to solve it, to heal it. you will not proportionally produce a better solution by people who are um, represented by a hundred million people than by those that are representing five million people necessarily there is a greater chance that a, a better solution will come from the hundred thousand people than uh, the five the hundred million people than the five million people but the quality and the originality and the perspective of that proposed solution will not be commensurate to the proportion of the population. So there's 
that's an interesting aspect uh, that has to do with uh, collectivizing the, the reasoning of a society through what it produces as intelligent proposals or intelligent dissertations. It is more about what a, a, a cultural language thinks like and reasons like and produces as its personality proposal as it, a proposal originally for its, from its a proposal originating from its personality of reasoning uh, so these are these are aspects of humanity that are interesting uh, which speak of the necessity of preserving all cultures equally and and, re and you never know where in other words uh, the solution or the salvation for something that is really stifling us will come from. So it's important to have all languages and all cultures and at the same time know that you know if you have a billion people that uh, you know and compared to uh, five million people um, there's also other forces that will say um, you'll more likely find whatever whatever among the five the billion people than the five million so both are true and these are all things that would be considered in in a new way of conceiving uh, a, a new united nations a, a recreated united nations uh that would that would uh embark on the task of creating a world with uh, conditions that allow for peace to exist <laughs> and rather than force the world to function a certain way so that supposedly we'll get to peace which we have clearly and amply demonstrated does not work fails at doing we, the United Nations has had 75 years I believe or so to show or to demonstrate that it has some capacity what it has uh, achieved is, yeah, it has, you know, people will argue and say, well, you know, thanks to the United Nations, this war ended or that situation was solved. But it was really not solved in the, in the greater scope of civilization's advancement. What we would want as a world, which is for everybody to just live in peace, and also it solved these situations in the benefit of some and the detriment or the repression of others. In other words, it has forced situations of peace rather than created situations for peace to uh, sprout and spread naturally, which is what we want, is for humanity to find its natural fo peaceful form, uh, which it can achieve when, for example, um, in a, in a, in a in, let's say, in the, tri the tribal vision of a, a, a valley of people that speak the same language, you know, and then it could do, um, it could go about creating a an artificial language with all the technologies that we have now. We could make it supernatural, musical, using the best grammar we can find among all languages and the most ample. We can find exactly the level and the limit in which everyday use will will keep a language thriving and and interesting and exciting and beautiful for people and we can do all this with our technological means today so that would be one thing the United Nations should also uh, be a, the organization that takes care of, of of life on the planet it should be the one that was most interested just like the brain makes sure that nothing happens to any of its organs the United Nations should be the first one that that saves tigers that are starving in zoos that um, that stops um, forests from getting destroyed, that makes that embarks on great projects of uh, reforesting or re, uh, replanting, no, how do you say it, reseeding the oceans with fish, board, in, a, in a borderless context, in a way that has nothing to do with using systems or, or starting from that premise, I'm not saying that overnight everybody has to get rid of their borders, but uh, starting from that premise, it can later say, well, this is how the United, the United Nations can say to countries concerned, this is how we're going to do it. What, you know, how much are you willing to budge? How much are you willing to be flexible? 
uh, we can compensate or uh, remunerate this way or that way uh, and work, yes, with the world as it is, but starting from a, a completely different way of going about uh, its function. Okay, 50 minutes and 9, 10 seconds. At least it wasn't an hour. Thanks for listening. All right, bye.